Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to go through uh, eight more supplements you can take to improve your schizophrenia symptoms. We'll get started with the most important, I think, to the least important, though I put some prescription medications at the end that have been shown to benefit, uh, as a side effect, benefit schizophrenia out outcomes. Um, as always, uh, the science I mentioned in the video will be in the description of the video, so do check that out if you want a more comprehensive breakdown, and we will get started now with the first supplement. The first supplement I'm going to mention uh, looks quite promising. I was quite excited when I discovered it. I haven't tried it myself, but it is methylfolate. Uh, folate is um, vitamin B9, and methylfolate is a form of folate that can cross the blood-brain ba barrier quite easily. And... Uh, it affects the um, production and breakdown, I think, of monoamines like serotonin and dopamine. And it also is used in the production of DNA. In the study, they tested people for low folate uh, levels. Uh, it's a blood test and they did red blood cell folate uh, examination. Uh, and those with a folate level of below 200 micrograms, uh, not milligrams, micrograms, uh, were uh, given supplemental folate. And that was about 20% of the people had low folate um, levels. Uh, low folate is more common in schizophrenia. Acute low folate is under 150. A borderline low folate is under 200, so they took everyone who had under 200 micrograms of folate in their red blood cell folate levels, not their serum folate levels. So serum folate levels are your levels at that moment in time. Uh, the folate level in your red blood cells is your average folate level over three months. So they took those with an average folate level below 200 micrograms and they added them to this study uh, with uh, supplemental folate given to them for a six month period. They supplemented with 15 milligrams of methylfolate a day. Uh, I've seen some uh, um, indications you can do 7.5 milligrams of folate a day but they did 15 milligrams of folate a day. You can probably half that. They did it for um, six months. So they took 15 milligrams for six months in this study. And the results were very promising indeed. Uh, for those with a low folate level who were added to the study and took supplemental folate, their symptoms halved. Uh, so they had a 50% uh, a, a, a reduction in their symptoms of schizophrenia um, as measured by the clinical rating scale um, uh, which is a test of mental health that uh, if you want more details on that test it is linked below but it basically halved your symptoms of schizophrenia if provided you have low folate it's not clear if it helps people who do not have low folate, but in this study, those with low folate uh, saw a tremendous improvement in their schizophrenia symptoms by taking methylfolate. I looked at two other scientific studies with folate and schizophrenia, but they did not test for low folate levels. One was a genetic test. They did a genetic test. Uh, someone with a certain gene was a 10% responder, a 20% responder if you include the placebo effect with supplemental folate, um, uh, folic acid in this case, not methylfolate. And um, so that was a 10% effect if you had a certain gene that affected your folate levels. Uh, and then I looked at another study that again did not test for low folate levels, but they supplemented um, uh, two milligrams of uh, folic acid and uh, uh, the results was a 10% uh, a improvement to schizophrenia symptoms 
and this was done in people with high homocysteine levels and homocysteine is affected by um, and brought down by folate and vitamin B12 and they supplemented with both of those but the initial study is the exciting study where they test for low folate levels they give methylfolate and uh, the effect was um, quite promising and I do intend uh, on testing myself for low folate levels and taking methylfolate as there are virtually um, no side effects with taking it. There was no side effects in the patients who took it in these studies and generally speaking there are very few side effects with taking methylfolate uh, though they now do fortify foods. So when the, the methylfolate study was done they did not fortify foods with folate but nowadays um, the government adds, or the uh, grain producers add folate to their product to uh, prevent nutritional def deficiencies in the population. Uh, that's mainly uh, due to um, uh, development, uh, pregnancy and uh, early development are affected by low folate levels. But uh, as you can see in some of these studies, uh, folate has a positive effect on you um, if you have low folate levels. And some of that effect may be mitigated today because they do fortify foods today with folate, but I do intend on testing myself. And potentially taking methylfolate if my tests come back that I am deficient in it and I'm really excited to see if uh, that improves my schizophrenia symptoms and I I hope that you consider uh, taking the test and hopefully it will improve your symptoms if you are deficient in methylfolate uh, and we'll get on to the next supplement. So zinc is a very exciting supplement for schizophrenics. Many schizophrenics are deficient in zinc uh, and they've done some studies with supplementing zinc and it led to a 30% reduction in your positive symptoms of schizophrenia, a 30% reduction in your negative symptoms of schizophrenia, and a 10% improvement in your cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia in the PANS test. So zinc is a powerful supplement uh, that can help your schizophrenia symptoms. It also leads to a much lower aggression score. So if you are aggressive, if you uh, and you have schizophrenia, this can potentially uh, mitigate that problem and solve that problem. So it's a powerful supplement you can take. It works by lowering the NMDA uh, function in your uh, in your brain, which is uh, in the rat model. Various models use the glutamate system to model schizophrenia. And this lowers that and has a tremendously positive effect. In this uh, study, they uh, supplemented with 50 milligrams of zinc uh, a day. Uh, that is a bit high. They don't actually recommend you take that much zinc. Um, so they did 50 milligrams a day for six weeks. Uh, the recommended maximum is 40 milligrams. So I recommend you have a 50 milligram pill in two. So you take 25 milligrams of zinc every day for six weeks and you should see a, uh, a large improvement in your schizophrenia symptoms. It did help me, uh, though at the, towards the end of the six weeks, I did start getting a little bit lightheaded because, uh, zinc affects the absorption of copper and copper is used to produce red blood cells and if you do not have red blood cells uh, you get a bit lightheaded uh, you have uh, you know lower oxygen uh, delivered throughout your system so do watch for a, uh, a a low red blood cell count caused by excessive zinc you can try and take some copper try and eat some dark leafy greens and get a little bit of more copper to offset this effect but I do recommend you try zinc and it was a um, it was you know really positive for me when I took it and uh, because I was struggling a bit with some residual symptoms of schizophrenia and that kind of tampered it down and I, I feel um, in a good place mentally today um, partially because of zinc.
The next supplement I will mention is sarcosine. Sarcosine um, uh, works on the NMDA function as well, as, along with zinc. They both work on a similar uh, area of the brain, I believe. So I'm not sure if you want to mix the two, but sarcosine has a 15% improvement uh, to PAN scores. Uh, in one study, they took two grams a day of sarcosine. And in another study, it was a 5% uh, improvement uh, to PAN scores. And these are after the placebo effect is accounted for. So uh, there was more of an effect by taking into account the placebo, placebo effect, which is about a 5% effect in these studies, and maybe a little higher. Um, it was a 15% improvement in one study and a 5% improvement in another study. It does help depression a bit, I believe. It helps cognitive function. Um, it is as effective as an anti-anxiety pill. Uh, so if you're on anti-anxiety medications or if you have a lot of anxiety, this is as effective as a pill in preventing anxiety. It is also a 20% uh, reduction in OCD symptoms. So if you have obsessive compulsive disorder, this reduces your symptoms by 20%. It also has a bit of a hypoamanic effect. It uh, decreases your need for sleep, uh, which is quite positive. Uh, it increases your libido, <laughs> which, uh, you know, some people, uh, uh, you know, have that as a goal. And it increases your mood. So uh, it, three uh, kind of hypomanic effects. You know, some people get wedded to uh, the mania of schizophrenia and the mania of bipolar. And um, this causes, you know, some elevated mood, some elevated libido, and some decreased need to sleep. So it makes you slightly uh, more manic, um, but it's not in a pathological way. It's probably um, a positive. So uh, you can consider taking sarcosine. I'm not sure if you want to uh, mix it with zinc, but uh, it does have a 15% improvement to your PAN scores, and it could be worth taking, especially if you have anxiety or OCD or uh, you sleep a lot. And I do sleep a lot, so I may look into taking it for myself uh, to hopefully uh, get rid of some of my need for sleep. And since schizophrenics are usually deficient in zinc, you might want to try taking zinc uh, for a bit and then after you have taken your zinc you've had that effect maybe it's a couple months later uh, then you can try taking sarcosine and see if that has effect but i will look into it uh, more the study had people taking sarcosine for uh, six weeks at two grams a day and uh, the effects uh, increased with time it wasn't clear um, if the effects remained after stopping taking it. Uh, so with zinc, you retain most of the effect of the zinc after discontinuation. They did not do a discontinuation with this study, so you may have to continue to take it to continue to get the effect, but that was not uh, elucidated in these studies. The next supplement I will mention is L-thiamine. L-thiamine uh, increases GABA, which is a neurotransmitter, has some neuroprotective effects, and it also increases the NMDA function again, the same as uh, zinc and a um, sarcosine. So there was a 10% improvement in your PAN scores. Uh, there was a, uh, in the study, there was a 20% effect from the placebo. There was a 30% effect from L-thiamine. Uh, so L-thiamine had a 10% uh, better effect than placebo. Uh, L-thiamine is found in green tea. There are virtually no effects to taking L-thiamine, uh, no ill effects to taking L-thiamine supplements. So if you want to try it, you can try it. Next uh, supplement I will mention is the amino acid lysine. Um, lysine... Uh, has had some research done on it. Some people mention it as a possible uh, supplement you can take. I looked into taking lysine and the effect you get from lysine was similar to a placebo effect. 
So I would not recommend you take lysine to improve your schizophrenia symptoms. The next three things I will mention that you can take to improve your schizophrenia symptoms come from a Swedish uh, population-wide study of schizophrenics in Sweden, and they compared them with what prescription medication they were on. And certain prescription medications reduced the hospitalization of those with schizophrenia. So metformin, uh, the diabetes medication metformin, uh, part of the biguanase uh, class of medications that reduce blood sugar, uh, led to a 27% reduction in hospitalization. So if you had, if you took metformin, you were 25% less likely to be hospitalized specifically for schizophrenia, and you were also 36% less likely to uh, be hospitalized for self-harm. So metformin improved uh, the, uh, the uh, risks associated with having schizophrenia. Uh, statins. So if you were taking statins and had schizophrenia, statins lower your cholesterol, uh, their cholesterol-lowering medication. Um, that was a 25% reduction in your risk of hospitalization for schizophrenia. It was also a 45% reduction in your hospitalization risk for self-harm. So uh, statins had a tremendously positive effect on your risk of hospitalization. Calcium channel blockers, which reduce high blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers reduce your risk of hospitalization by 20% if you had schizophrenia. Uh, they did not reduce your risk of self-harm. So these three... Uh, prescription medications all uh, helped uh, in dealing with your schizophrenia symptoms. I'm not going to postulate why exactly. I could come up with some ideas, but uh, just know that if you're taking either uh, metformin, uh, statins, or um, calcium channel blockers, your odds of being hospitalized with schizophrenia are reduced. So I'm quite excited about some of these uh, supplements. I do uh, intend on looking into methylfolate for myself. I may start taking sarcosine for myself uh, because I feel like um, uh, I did the zinc. The zinc helped. The zinc effects are largely retained, but uh, that uh, fixes a zinc deficiency and the sarcosine may continue to uh, up my NMDA receptor level and increase my functioning and hopefully decrease my need of sleep. But uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, for watching the video. Uh, I hope some of this has helped you uh, or at least informed you about what you can potentially do to uh, empower yourself and uh, solve some of your uh, nagging symptoms of schizophrenia or the nagging symptoms of a loved one who is going through the ordeal that is schizophrenia, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, leave a comment if you'd like to, and uh, share the video with uh, some uh, friends or some who are interested in uh, schizophrenia research. All right, thank you very much, and have a great day.